I'm sitting extremely uncomfortably in a comfortable chair in a white room, wringing my hands and clenching my fists open and shut and trying to contain myself. But I'm not doing a very good job of that. I've got tears flowing down my face and I've been talking for a whole hour. And finally, at the end of the session, the counsellor says to me, Christina, if you went out for dinner and you ordered pizza and that pizza came to your table and it was cold, you would eat that pizza. And I went, oh, that's actually true. I've actually <laughs> done that. <laughs> and, but it was more than that. And I thought, you know what, he's actually right. I'm actually eating some cold pizza, you know, in various areas in my life. And I think, oh, like, how has this happened? You know, I'm a pretty smart woman. I'm educated and I'm strong. And I go, well, I'm 45. I survived a, a violent father. I survived sexual abuse. I became a classical clarinetist. I went to university and became a teacher and then I've ended up in university lecturing and tutoring and researching. I've written a research master's that's this thick. <laughs> and I also have been married for 24 years. And I have two grown up children that I'm really proud of. They're wonderful, articulate, interesting people. And within that, I also found the time to actually sort of work on myself and like, you know, work out some of my issues. And I admit I had quite a few. So <laughs> it took some time. And so I took that time to do that for myself. And furthermore, I actually decided, oh, I have like, you know, some understanding that could help other people. And so I wrote a book and I opened a clinic to actually support other people to work out their stuff and to live um, freely and joyfully in their life. And I went, oh, I'm not actually doing that. Actually, at this point in time, my heart and my soul are actually feeling like they're crushed. And if anyone just steps on them one more time, they're going to poof up into a piece of dust. And I can't really understand why I've got here, but I take this idea home. And I go home and I really start to like look at the interactions that are going on around me in all areas of my life. And I assess everything by, Am I being served cold pizza here? <laughs> <laughs> and so I realise that although there are some other areas in my life, I'm actually being served quite a lot of cold pizza in my relationship. And the cold pizza is made up of three main slices, emotional, financial and sexual. So a few weeks later, I take my husband to the counsellor with me. And the counsellor says to my husband, do you love Christina enough to be willing to start working on these issues? And the counsellor gently prompts and he says, you know, Christina's like, you know, really clearly articulated these three things, you know, anger, criticism, financial control. Do you think that, you know, you love her enough that you could actually just begin to start working on these? <coughs> I'm certain that he's going to say yes. But in the car on the way home, that's a very different story. And so he starts saying to me, you know, you know, you do that and you do that. And you know what? That's actually your fault. You know, you started doing that. And you and you and you and you. And I am silenced because I have a huge lump of cold pizza that is sitting in my throat. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? I keep trying. 
And I think, well, you know, like, it, you know, it could be possibly right. Like, you know, maybe I've served him up a bit of cold pizza occasionally too. And so, you know what, I'm going to go on this holiday with him that we've planned and I'm really going to try and open up my heart and let this guy back in and reconnect. Yeah, it'll, it'll you know, let's see, let's see. And so we're in beautiful Koh Samui. It's January 2014 and we're sitting on a table and chairs right on the beach under this apricot sunset. It's so romantic. <laughs> and my husband says to me, wow, like, look how much these meals cost. <laughs> <laughs> and I just immediately kind of clam up because this is a constant thing that I have heard throughout our entire relationship and I realise that this guy has actually been my financial dietitian. <laughs> <laughs> and he has been giving me some very poor, small portions. <laughs> <laughs> and you know what I've had to do? I've had to sneak some little bites underneath the table. <laughs> And I've had to save them up and sneak them in later. And you know what I realise? I'm like, I don't want this. I actually want to have a binge. I want to spend some money on my kids when I want to. I want to buy myself some fantastic underwear. <laughs> and I want to buy myself some fabulous shoes. And guess what? I want to buy them without anybody saying, how much did they cost? cold pizza. And so I'm actually a little bit angry then. And so we go back to the villa. And so I kind of use this trick that I've used before where you actually just take a really long time to get ready to get to bed. And um, so... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry if I divulged any um, <laughs> tricks that other people are using. <laughs> And so by the time I get there, I slip like really quietly under the, under the sheets and my, my husband is actually asleep. And I'm like, good. And so I start thinking about like, what could I do? And so I start thinking about, well, you know what? I've been served up a little bit of stale pizza here. And I've actually tried to introduce a few more toppings here but no one was interested. No one was interested in extra toppings, can you believe it? <laughs> and so, you know, I have to think for myself about what I might actually want. And you know what, I'm starting to think that I would like this really thick piece of like really saucy pizza. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm also thinking about, you know, the bits attached to the saucy pizza, what they might do. And, <laughs> <laughs> and so I'm thinking about all like, you know, the ways that I uh, want to be tasted and all the ways that I want to be savoured and all the ways that I want to be heard and all the ways that I want what I say to be acknowledged and actually acted upon, that would be some pretty hot pizza. And then I start thinking about the tasting a little bit more. And that would be hot pizza. And so the next evening, we go to a little stall down the road, you know, the little ones in Thailand where it's, it's extremely cheap, so that's why we're going. <laughs> <At any time>. <laughs> <laughs> so we're sitting down and uh, waiting for our meal and we've ordered, you know, a meal each and so uh, my husband's meal comes out first and it's this massive plate of pork crackling. And so we're like, okay, well, I'm still waiting for my meal. So we start like just having like a little nibble of the pork. And like when I reach for my third little piece of the pork, my husband says, what are you doing? Like, don't have that, you pig. Oh. And it's like a 
bolt of electric shock going through my head and this megaphone voice in my head says, you will never experience joy with this man. Mm. And so, how many times do you have to be served up cold pizza before you realise that the oven is broken? <laughs> And so we fly home and I leave. I take my car, I take my laptop, I take my work clothes and my $50 that's in my bank account and I leave. So it's been, you know, four years since that journey and I've actually like been on this quest to find hot pizza. <laughs> <laughs> And I've learnt a lot along the time. And so emotionally, what I've learnt is that your friends and family that love you unconditionally and can watch you fall apart and your facade drop and you build, rebuild your life and be there and more than listen to you, they actually action things. And it might be just something simple like a cup of tea. I'm a tea girl. And um, it might be a glass of wine. <laughs> I'm a wine girl too. And uh, it might be that they offer you a couch to sleep on or a bed or a room. And so I discovered the people in my life that were emotionally hot pizza. And one of my special people was my, my auntie who actually um, allowed me to land at her place and be nourished by her when I needed it during the really hard times. And so what about financially? So financially it was a bit of a struggle that year because I was working casually at university. It sounds good that I'm lecturing and tutoring, but it wasn't actually giving me the financial nourishment that I needed. And so towards the end of the year I thought, I, I actually have to do something here to you know, get myself into a position that I want to be. Oh, we'll talk about that later. And um, <laughs> we, um, what I did was actually I applied for two jobs and I got one of those jobs and that job was hot pizza. And it was hot pizza because I was valued for the work that I was doing and people like thought that I was awesome because I was like really good at my job <laughs> and I loved it because I was like um, doing professional development with teachers and working with teachers and supporting them. I loved it. And the other thing was that, the, that my boss really thought that I was gold and it was wonderful to be valued like that. And more than that, having that hot pizza job meant that I could actually start my life and that I could um, get myself a unit, I could buy myself a car, which is all amazing. However, what's really hot pizza for me is being able to share mine with other people and being able to actually help my family and friends when they needed it as well. And so sexually, <laughs> <laughs> it took a little time, you know, for that to kick off, but oh boy, when it kicked off, it really kicked off. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a bit of a surprise to me. And it was a bit of a surprise, you know, how many pizza parlours you could visit. <laughs> And so I tried lots of different variations <laughs> and combinations. <laughs> <laughs> and what I found was that there was, you know, look, there was a couple of hot pizzas, but there were some cold pizzas as well, and there was also a couple of frozen pizzas. <laughs> mostly there was lukewarm pizza <laughs> and so like after like digesting all of this pizza <laughs> I actually started to feel like it was like 
just sitting in my gut a bit and I started to feel a little bit bloated <laughs> and I felt like I really needed to detox. <laughs> <laughs> And so I tried to go on a fast, right? <laughs> and along after this came Magic Mike. <laughs> and Magic Mike was this amazing mix of, you know, spicy and sweet, <laughs> salty and zesty. And he had this amazing, like, mixture of intensity and tenderness. And the best thing about Magic Mike was that he looked at me and he actually saw me and amazingly to me actually liked what he saw. And to me that was like a revelation to be seen like that. More than that, Mike has supersonic hearing and so like he would actually listen. And beyond listening, he would listen to what I wanted and what I didn't want, and he would respond to that. And like weirdly, he really did have these supersonic ears. He heard what I actually wasn't saying, and he responded to that as well. And the other thing was that um, Magic Mike, who listened, he looked and listened, he learnt. And so Magic Mike looked and he listened and he learnt. He looked, he listened and he learnt and then he looked and he listened and learnt some more and finally, finally looking down into those blue, blue eyes on my bed on that afternoon, I can feel this feminine energy rising. I begin to forget about everything else and it rises and I'm split open and Hot pizza! <laughs> now, you know, that all sounds like a lot of fun and games. <laughs> However, um, you know, it can actually be hard to reject cold pizza in your life. And particularly as a woman, if you've been fed cold pizza bit by bit, you know, for a very, very long time, it can be especially hard. And so it, it, it takes, you know, this courage and bravery and it has consequences. And the consequences were for me that, you know, as a woman who's rejecting cold pizza, you can really be perceived as being cold or a bitch or just so different. You've changed and it means that some people leave your life. I had to rebuild my life from scratch. I had to leave my home and rebuild everything from scratch. And I had to, you know, try to use my emotions, including anger, to drive me forward without allowing them to swallow me. And that was hard. And the biggest consequence for me was that I had to leave my two children at home and I'm still mending those relationships. However, it has been worth it. This quest for hot pizza has been an amazing journey and I feel that I have hot pizza in all areas of my life now. And so I invite you to join me on this journey and to put in your mind now and wonder, am I actually accepting cold pizza in any area of my life? And if you are, you actually have three choices. One is keep eating the cold pizza. Two, say that you've got cold pizza and send it back to be heated up. And three, if it comes back and it is not hot, leave that pizza parlour. <laughs> And 
And so now, fabulous men and amazing women, I invite you to stand and repeat after me. I deserve hot pizza. I deserve hot pizza. Look at the person next to you and say, you deserve hot pizza. You deserve hot pizza. And then we say, we deserve hot pizza. We deserve hot pizza. Bon appetit. <laughs> <laughs>